Hello and welcome to part two of the multi-chamber bag parental nutrition video series. My name is Jacob Hall and I will be going over prescribing and order review. While I will be discussing different brand name products during this presentation, keep in mind that Aspen does not endorse any one product over another that may be seen in this presentation. So what are the multi-chamber bag parental nutrition products? The Aspen definition is that these are standardized, commercially available parental nutrition products available from a manufacturer. These products require fewer compounding steps before administration. Examples of these are multi-chamber bags containing concentrated amino acids plus concentrated dextrose with or without electrolytes and with or without injectable lipid emulsions. For the purpose of this video series, we will call these products multi-chamber bag parental nutrition or MCBPN. Oftentimes the term premix PN is used to describe MCB PNs, but this should be avoided as some mixing and additives are required even with these products. On this slide, you can see an overview of the PN use process as defined by the PN safety consensus recommendations. This video session will focus on the sections of ordering, prescribing, and review of the PN order for the PN use process. So starting with safe prescribing of parental nutrition as laid out in the 2014 PN safety consensus recommendations. Number one is to ensure that a patient has an appropriate indication for PN. I would refer you to a recent publication by Worthington and colleagues in JPEN 2017 entitled, When is Parental Nutrition Appropriate? It goes through in great detail appropriate PN indication and other considerations. Number two is to ensure that a patient has an appropriate venous access for PN, whether this be peripheral versus central, long-term versus an intermediate or short-term. Number three is to determine appropriate energy and protein goals for a patient, keeping in mind the patient's specific conditions. Number four is to identify therapeutic goals and monitoring parameters, for example, a short-term PN in the hospital being different than, say, a patient who requires long-term home PN and long-term monitoring. Number five is to use a standardized PN order format, including a correct sequence of components to help reduce the risk of errors when prescribing. Number six is to use a computerized provider order entry or CPOE system in order to order the PN. And again, this helps to reduce the risk of errors and improve efficiency in the ordering process. And finally, number seven is to avoid handwritten, verbal, or telephone orders for PN due to their complexity and risk for errors. This is a standardized template from the PN safety consensus recommendations. This was developed for prescribers to determine and then enter the amount for each individual macronutrient as well as each electrolyte and mineral. Furthermore, you can adjust the amount of a single component and keep all of the other components the same as long as the admixture is stable and components compatible. This type of template though is challenging for the use of MCBPN products and the MCB PN products will require a different approach to prescribing due to their fixed uh, amounts per volume. Institutions will generally have three to four MCB PN products on their PN formulary. The prescriber will need to determine which product to choose based on energy and protein goals and prescribe an appropriate volume that would meet the patient's needs. These are the required elements of a standardized PN order that require special considerations or concerns when prescribing and reviewing orders for MCB PN. Number one is the route of infusion with central versus peripheral administration. MCB PN products on formulary must be identified for which ones are appropriate for central versus peripheral infusions. The second required element is the volume and infusion rate. For MCBPN products, the prescribed rate or volume might not utilize the entire bag within 24 hours. Instructions must be added to discard the remainder of the MCBPN bag if this is the case. Third is the type of PN formulation. For MCBPNs, the product concentrations should be limited via formulary in order to reduce the chance for error with selecting the correct formulation. 
The next required component of the PN order is the PN ingredients listed in amounts per day. MCB PN manufacturer labels actually list the amounts per liter or the amounts per bag, not the amounts that a patient would receive per day. Tools should be used to help prescribers identify the amounts per day that a patient will receive, particularly when the entire bag is not infused. Another required component is that PN electrolytes uh, are, are, should be ordered via salt form. Current MCB PN electrolytes are listed as individual ions on the manufacturer label. Any additional electrolytes added to the MCB should be ordered as the salt form as opposed to the ion form. Other required components include ordering via brand name when multiple products exist, such as in the case with amino acid formulations. For the MCB PNs, these should also be ordered via their brand name identification. Dosing for each macronutrient should also be listed on the PN order, and for the MCB PNs that are ordered via their concentrations, such as the 5% amino acid, 15% dextrose, tools should be used to calculate the amounts that the patient will receive based on the volume to be infused. Dosing for each electrolyte are also required on the PN order, and for the MCB PNs, electrolyte dosing will be dependent on the product selected and the volume to be infused. Again, tools should be used that help prescribers identify the amount that the patient will receive per day, especially if the entire bag is not going to be infused. Finally, the dosing for each non-nutrient medication should be added to the PN order. One example of this would be insulin. When prescribing MCBPN, prescribers must be cognizant that if the entire bag is not going to be infused, the patient will not receive the entire dose of the medication that was added to the bag. This can lead to confusion on the order and potential underdosing of medications. Next, we will discuss the order reviewing process. This is the order review checklist from the PN Safety Consensus Recommendations. The review process follows the same format and organizations as the PN order. Many of the MCB PN specific considerations were addressed with regard to the prescribing process. The pharmacist reviewing the PN order is responsible for a pharmaceutical review including compatibility and stability of the formulation. This checklist is available on the Aspen website under PN Safety Toolkit, PN Safety Recommendations. A few MCB PN considerations when reviewing the PN order is that the current MCB PN products contain both calcium and phosphate in their formulations with electrolytes. Additional calcium or phosphate added to these solutions could produce precipitation. The manufacturers of MCB PN have compatibility curves for these solutions, and these should be reviewed if additions to the bag are going to be made. Other additional electrolytes, minerals, and micronutrients can be added to the MCB PN bags, and policies should be created to govern what additions are allowed. Currently, there is not a lot of data on the additional electrolyte additions, and you'll have to consult manufacturers for recommendations on these additions. Finally, for the 2-in-1 MCB PNs, some products allow for the addition of the IV lipid formulations to the MCB PN bag to form a total nutrient admixture, or TNA. Guidelines from the manufacturer should be followed with regard to adding the IV lipid emulsions. A PN use survey published in 2013 by Bolada and colleagues showed that electronic order entry for PN was used in only about one third of the organizations surveyed, with even then just over half of those using a standardized process. Standardized processes were more often applied to adults with only about 36% of pediatric PN orders and 46% of neonatal PN orders having a standardized order entry process. With regard to MCB PN standardizations, these will often require a different template to prescribe compared to compounded PN mixtures, and there is a lack of standardized MCB PN templates available. You may need a standardized manufacturer-specific template in order to prescribe these within a CPOE system. A few tools are available by the manufacturer to aid prescribers. This is an example of a tool to help determine how much volume of a MCB PN product is required to meet a patient's needs, as well as the macronutrient breakdown and electrolytes provided. 
You can also see the amounts provided per bag in the bottom section of this chart. Tools like this can help the prescriber or order reviewer see what the patient should receive even if the patient has not prescribed an entire bag of MCBPN. Here is another example of a tool created by MCBPN manufacturers to help determine macronutrients and electrolyte content to be provided based on volume to be received. In this case, this is for the two-in-one MCBPN uh, formulation. To conclude, prescribing MCBPN requires special considerations as compared to compounded PN formulations. The order review process for MCBPN includes product-specific compatibility and stability considerations. Tools are available to help assist clinicians in determining the nutrients provided by MCBPN products. And please note the black box warnings for any of these products to help increase patient safety. Here are the references. And as an acknowledgement, this is an educational offering that was provided to you by Aspen, supported by an educational grant provided by Fresenius Cobby.